What's going on world? It's your boy Aiden here and today we are going on a field trip. Come on. All right, so before we go on this field trip, the one thing you have to do is bundle up. The second thing is I'm gonna have to teach you a little bit about LGBT history. Don't worry, it won't be boring, I promise. So today I wanna talk to you a little bit about Matthew Shepard and the Matthew Shepard Foundation since this is the 20th anniversary of his death. In 1998, Matthew Shepard was 21 years old. He was going to college in Wyoming and he decided to go out to a bar in Laramie. There is where he met two gentlemen who then later kidnapped him, beat him, smashed his skull in with the back of a pistol, and then proceeded to tie him up to a fence in the middle of nowhere and left to die. Fortunately for Matthew and his family, he was found 18 hours later. Sadly, six days after this incident, Matthew Shepard died. But let's get real. There was no protection in all 50 states for LGBT folks. There was no marriage equality in all 50 states. And Don't Ask, Don't Tell had only been around for about five years. In 1998, it still wasn't cool to be gay. So, where was I in 1998? Well, I learned about Matthew Shepard via MTV News. My oldest brother, he's about six years older than me, so he was 17, and yeah, I watched MTV News and MTV over his shoulder when I probably wasn't allowed to. When I saw Matthew Shepard on the news, it was images of a young man tied up to a fence. They described the blood on his face that his face was so beaten in and pistol whipped that the only space you could actually see that wasn't covered in blood was the tears that ran down his face. That's the year that I learned being gay was not okay. I was only 11 years old and I'd already been shown through the news and media that if I wanted to live a gay life then I could possibly be the next Matthew Shepard. So that's why I came here to print this out. That's why I've come to this school with this heart. I want to remind every LGBT kid who goes to this school that they are enough exactly how they are. You see, Matthew Shepard went to that bar and he didn't know that it was going to become an unsafe place. And granted, any place could become unsafe because it matters who the people are within that safe space. So if you can provide safety for other people as well as yourself, why wouldn't you take the chance? It's a scary reality because at the end of the day, anybody could be tied to any fence anywhere, tortured, beaten, and left to die because of their gender status or their sexuality preferences. And that's just not the world we want to live in. So instead of making unsafe places more recognizable, let's put hearts all over your entire town to remind your community that this is a safe place and a safe space. That people are welcome for exactly who they are and never again will someone be tied to a fence and left there to die. Not on our watch. This is the part where I challenge you to go to the link below, the Matthew Shepard Foundation, print out your own heart, write an inspiring message on the back, and put it on a fence in your town to remind the people in your local community that any place can be a safe space as long as we come together and unify as a community, not just of LGBT people, but of our allies as well. If you decide to participate in this challenge, make sure you tag Matthew Shepard Foundation or use the hashtag MSF20 to celebrate not the death of Matthew Shepard, but the awareness that his death brought to our community and the actions taken ever since that terrible, terrible day in 1998. 